How difficult is it to land a carrier-based aircraft? In the 40 years from 1947 to 1987, the U.S. Navy lost more than 1,200 aircraft and more than 850 pilots. 70% of all flight accidents occurred during carrier-based landings, and even now, the U.S. still loses more than 15 aircraft per year. Carrier-based aircraft generally take about 12 seconds from entering the flight path, aligning with the centerline, to landing, and 80% of landing accidents occur within those 12 seconds. After receiving the landing order, the carrier-based aircraft has to shut down the weapon system, determine whether the aircraft's weight is compounded for carrier landing, then turn on the speed brakes, drop the hook and landing gear, slide down to land behind the carrier landing center extension, and finally be intercepted by the arresting gear system from hundreds of kilometers per hour down to zero. Although it sounds simple, it is difficult to implement in practice. Compared with land airports, the deck of an aircraft carrier is too small. Of course, if you look at the size alone, carriers are already large among warships. If the Nimitz-class carriers are erected, the height is basically equivalent to the Empire State Building in New York, but the actual landing distance available is estimated to be about 100 meters, while the Air Force's land military airports are generally 3,000 meters. If you count the area, the area of the deck is only 1 50th of the land airport, so the small area carrying aircraft may be more than the land airport aircraft, but also to ensure that the aircraft takeoff and landing are orderly. The small area is only the first problem with carrier-based aircraft landing, the sea also lacks obvious landmarks, and the pilot will accidentally deviate from the landing route. Moreover, there is a fundamental difference between carriers and land airports. Land airports are fixed, while carriers are in motion, such as swaying up and down, back and forth, and swaying left and right. The carrier-based aircraft needs a hook to hook the arresting gear when landing. If the carrier is in descent, the hook may not be hooked, and the landing may fail. The carrier-based aircraft maintains a certain altitude and speed towards the carrier. In this case, the carrier in the sea looks like a falling leaf to the pilot as the waves keep swaying, and the pilot has to constantly adjust the flight attitude according to it to ensure accurate entry into the landing route, which is very difficult. Therefore, the US Navy stipulates that the carrier-based aircraft landing carrier's longitudinal sway does not exceed 2 degrees and its lateral sway does not exceed 7 degrees. At the same time, carrier-based aircraft also need to accelerate when landing, basically reaching more than 200 km per hour or even close to 300 km per hour. This is not the same as the Air Force. The Air Force's land airports are long, relying on several kilometers of runway slow deceleration, but carrier-based aircraft cannot guarantee that every landing can be successful, which requires carrier-based aircraft to maintain a certain speed, resulting in landing failure immediately after the resumption of flight. Accelerated landing also brings another problem, overload load. From hundreds of kilometers per hour directly down to zero, this will cause a huge overload load on the human body, the cervical spine, lumbar spine, and spinal column will be impacted. If the carrier-based aircraft has a problem with the arresting gear when landing, it is still acceptable to pull it off just after landing, and the aircraft can maintain a certain speed and resume flying immediately, but if the arresting gear is pulled off at the end, the carrier-based aircraft will not be able to maintain a certain speed. If speed drops too much, there is only one result, crashing into the sea. In 2014, an Indian MiG-29 K landed successfully, and the pilot mistakenly thought he had failed to land and accelerated to resume flight, only to be pulled by the arresting gear and smashed directly into the flight deck, scraping the aircraft's front landing gear on the spot. This is only the difficulty of landing in normal weather, if it is night or bad weather, the difficulty of landing will increase again, increasing the pilot's psychological pressure when landing at night even more than during air combat. According to US Navy pilots, Despite the advanced equipment on carrier-based aircraft, it is not possible to be a pilot on an aircraft carrier without considerable guts. To this day, despite the US Navy's experience, the number of carrier-based aircraft losses remains high. The risk factor for naval pilots is 5 times that of astronauts and 20 times that of ordinary pilots. According to statistics, the average accident rate of carrier-based aircraft landing during the day is 4%, and the accident rate at night reaches 12.5%. Of course, 
Countries also know that carrier-based aircraft landing is difficult and have prepared a lot of auxiliary landing equipment, such as landing centerlines, Fresnel lenses, and so on. No matter which country's aircraft carrier, the carrier landing piece of the deck will be drawn on the three white lines used to assist the carrier-based aircraft landing. For example, on the deck of the Nimitz aircraft carrier, the three white lines on both sides represent the limit boundary line of the deck when landing, and the white line in the middle is the center line of landing. The pilot can look at the white line when landing to go forward, not to fly crooked. At the same time, the carrier is also equipped with relay navigation during landing. In addition, all carriers are equipped with Fresnel lenses, which can release three different colors, yellow, red, and orange. To help carrier-based aircraft land safely, it is similar to the advanced version of the traffic lights. If the pilot flies too high, he can only see yellow, if he flies too low, he can see red, and only when he sees orange can he land safely. At the same time, carrier-based aircraft landing hooks and arresting gear also have requirements. Aircraft carriers generally have four arresting gear, each more than 10 meters apart, hooking the middle one or two is the safest. If the first arresting gear is hooked when landing, it means that the aircraft landed at a low altitude and there is a risk of crashing into the ship. Hooking the fourth arresting gear proves that the aircraft's landing altitude is high, the risk of failure is high, and it is difficult to refly. Only hanging the second and third arresting gear is the safest, if the carrier is equipped with a three arresting gear system, you also need to hook the middle. It should also be noted that these problems mentioned above are only based on a single aircraft landing, but every time a carrier trains, dozens of aircraft take off and land at the same time. With such a small space but so many aircraft, it is difficult to plan. Although the general carrier deck is divided into three areas, takeoff, landing, and preparation, due to the limited space on the carrier deck, there is a certain overlap of the three areas. If there are some accidents, it will be very troublesome to deal with. As for advanced arresting gear, the electromagnetic catapult is indeed more advanced, but it does not help much to reduce the accident rate. For example, on the USS Ford, one of its most important improvements is the use of advanced arresting gear and an electromagnetic catapult instead of the steam catapult system and hydraulic arresting gear system. The USS Ford is equipped with advanced arresting gear, pulley dampers with more than two measuring tension sensors that can send different tension signals to the centralized controller, and then AAG starts the corresponding control program so as to effectively prevent overload while replacing the compression cylinder with a wire rope reel by controlling the initial and final current to achieve a uniform overload effect. If the aircraft of different weights take turns landing, just press the button, and everything is taken care of by the automatic adjustment device. In general, the advanced arresting gear system is more flexible and simpler to operate, which not only shortens the response time but also optimizes the effect. However, the electromagnetic arresting gear system is only a little bit better at limiting overload and response speed, but it does not reduce the accident rate, especially the escape and reflight and emergency handling issues that are similar to those of the hydraulic arresting gear system. The biggest difference between the electromagnetic arresting gear system and the hydraulic arresting gear system is that the former has changed the hydraulic energy absorption to electromagnetic energy absorption. The electromagnetic arresting gear system works on the principle of carrier-based aircraft landing. When the arresting gear system is hooked up by the aircraft to pull the deceleration, the whole system will automatically calculate and analyze the force of the arresting gear system's feedback to the motor and hydraulic turbine system and then give the most appropriate pull. In this way, the mechanical stopping and braking process, which was originally very rough and had no adjustable pull during landing, becomes very smooth and stable. This reduces the impact on the pilot and the carrier-based aircraft itself. Therefore, the electromagnetic arresting gear system is simpler and lighter and can precisely adjust the electromagnetic resistance to complete the carrier-based aircraft more effectively, whether the volume, weight, or routine maintenance work, maintenance costs, or maintenance difficulties, are much smaller than the traditional hydraulic mechanical arresting gear system. For example, the arresting gear system on the aircraft carrier, the traditional hydraulic mechanical arresting gear system, has a very short life, it needs to be replaced almost 125 times, and it may also appear that the carrier-based aircraft pull off the situation. 
According to the Nimitz carriers high intensity sorties of 120 sorties per day, in the case of fierce engagement, a daily replacement of the arresting gear is required. Compared to the use of the electromagnetic arresting gear system on the USS Ford, the arresting gear can be used almost 2,000 times. Of course, if you want to solve the problem of landing safety, vertical takeoff and landing may be a good choice through the carrier-based aircraft vectoring engine to control the landing direction without the arresting gear system to achieve landing. However, the use of vertical takeoff and landing also comes at a small price, such as the aircraft's combat radius and bomb load, which will be discounted, and a landing point below the deck to install complex cooling circulation pipes. Overall, for aircraft carriers, the accident rate of carrier-based aircraft landings can only be reduced with experience, electromagnetic arresting gear systems are not useful for this. Nowadays, the accident rate of carrier-based aircraft on US aircraft carriers is relatively low, and because of the experience of previous people, it is difficult to completely solve the alarming 12 seconds when the carrier-based aircraft lands.